My name is Anne, Anne Kiai, and I've recently been having questions about what happened to my leg. Uh, I recently had surgery for my knee. And people have been asking questions, what happened, what happened. I think it's time to give my story from the start, how it all began. My story is a story to encourage a GBV survivor. It's a story to encourage a daughter, a sister, a woman somewhere. It's basically a story of hope that one day we will get there. Mine is a story of surviving gender-based violence. It all began back in January. January, I remember it was January 19th, 2012. I was home for my long holidays. Because back then, at that time, I was, in, I, was a, I was a second year student in UN. We were home for long holidays. So basically, I was, I was, I was doing my usual shuglis by then, a job here, there. I remember I, I was home. I was home in Kisarian. And the middle of the night, it was, I remember, one. It was one, I remember well, it was one, one a.m. I heard screams. I li by then I lived in a house with my grandparents. It was, it's only my grandparents and I alone. So I heard screams from my grandparents' room. And the next thing I know, there was a knock on my door. I was told to open up or we'll break the door. Everything happened so fast because the next thing, I opened my door willingly. We were in darkness, the disconnected power. So I remember, I remember this man, in the darkness, it was this tall person, this big person, and he had boots. He asked me, where is your phone? I said, I have no phone. And the next thing told me, follow me. I remember myself following him, walking, walking home, in, in the house, walking to the living room, to the corridor, walking, I was following him, so innocent. I never thought he had something else on his mind. So he got to the living room, he told me to sit down. I sat, so I'm sitting, I'm sitting down at his feet. Then the next thing I saw him, and buckling his belt. And then it all came back. This is what I've always feared. This man wants to rape me in our house. I remember screaming. And the next thing that happened, I was beaten up. I was beaten up, a good one. I remember, I remember the beating. He had a torch, slaps, he kicked my back. And I was beaten, but I, by then, I didn't know that my, my leg had fractured or anything. Then after the beating, I had braids. He held me by the braids. And he told me to follow him. So he held me by the braids, we went to our kitchen. And then at that point, Toby, no, 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 at this point, I knew this man is going to rape me. Come what, come what. If I scream again, I'm going to die. So he went to our kitchen, told me. So by then, there is not even no speaking because you know this is what is going to happen. And that is it. So I sat in the kitchen. Then I remember the whole time, I remember, by then adrenaline had kicked in. All he kept saying, if you disturb me again, I'll cut off your legs. If you disturb me again, if you disturb me again, I'll call my colleagues. 
So what to do by then? I, I just I closed my eyes, closed my mouth, and told God to take control. Then he finished. I think by the time he finished, by that time, there were, there, were, there were three robbers. One of them was outside, one of them was inside the house with my grandparents. So the one who was inside, who was outside, told the, the other one to get out that they should go. So they all left. Another moment, I remember collecting myself. I went back to, I went back to bed. I remember my grandmother coming and asking me, because instincts, I think par parents' instincts, my grandmother asked me, the only thing she asked me was, has he raped you? I said, yes. And she told me, don't worry. We're going to hospital, we're going, we're going to sort this. So the man left. And that was it. So going back to bed, that's when I started feeling my leg, my leg is in pain. But then family had started coming in. It was a long night. It's hospital reporting. Luckily, there was a Nairobi women's just close by in Rongai. And I started my journey. And the journey, it was, I remember it was that morning. Because you started I had to go, you start the x-ray, what happened to your knee. Starting with the, with the pep. There were a lot of drugs to take. So in my mind, what I struggled with was the pain. So I remember going to hospital on a Thursday. I had my surgery on a Friday. And I think I was shaken. I was shaken. I was so shaken it hadn't hit me what had happened. And people will come and just saying that what happened, I was raped. I couldn't, I couldn't open, I couldn't say that word, say someone raped me. Because how, at that point, I think I'd followed all the rules. Because you are told to keep safe, go home early, don't go out, dress well. I'd followed all the basics. And I still got raped in the house. What also I didn't understand was why the violence? Why, 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 why did he have to beat me up? Because I was defenseless. I say God is good. I started my journey back in 2012. So I, fin I finished my pep, I had my surgery. The, su the knee, the knee, it was, it was a fracture, it was a fracture on my patella. So I had to have a, a wiring. That is when the wiring was put on my knee. I had a wiring to fix it. So after a month, I went back to school. So going back to school after a month, so much had happened because they had taken PEP. You go, uh, the hepatitis vaccines, the surgery, I still couldn't walk. It was too much to deal with at that point. And what I did, I ignored my coping mechanism by then. I decided, I decided to, to ignore the whole thing. I'll go for counseling, but I'll go for counseling and ask, what is this counselor going to tell me? The counselor is going to tell me, I'm sorry it happened. I, at that point, I wanted someone who would understand, who would tell me, I've been there. You're going to make it. That is the news that I wanted to hear at that point. I said life moved on. And life moved on because I remember I, I took years. I took years to publicly, publicly and openly say that. And people would ask me about what happened to your name. I'll lie. I'll say I had an accident. I fell on the stairs. I had different versions. I had different versions of what happened to me. But bit by bit, I started speaking up and I started opening up and say, what happened? I was beaten up. And someone would ask, who beat you up this much? What did you want? You wanted something else. And that's what I say. You wanted to rape me. And did you still go on after rape, uh, beating you and raping you? I say yes. So um, why, 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 why speaking this now? 
Because in society now, we are at this point where, as women, we are suffering. There's so much violence against women. There's so much gender-based violence. People are getting raped. People are getting killed. So much happens. I don't know. I don't know whether it's because we don't know close people that has happened to. All we hear is statistics. It happened to so and so. It happened to so and so. That we don't we don't identify with this with this stuff. As I as I speak in online, I'll write on my Facebook page what happened. I remember the first time I spoke about it, I'll just say I speak bits. And then the next year I'll be like on every on every 19th, and every 19th of January, I do a post. And sometimes I'll say, oh, am I speaking this? How are people judge me? Are people going to judge me? Am I going to be viewed as vulnerable? And then this year, nine years later, I did my post as usual. And to some people when I speak about it, they tell me, this, is, this story is a story of hope. It's a hope story of courage. Why don't you share it? Why don't you speak it to more people? Why don't you openly say what happened? Why don't you encourage someone else? After, after 19th January this year, I looked at my knee, I said, it's nine years later, my knee has healed. Why don't I, why don't I have a surgery to have the wiring removed? Why it took many years to have the wiring removed? It's because it was bringing back all the trauma, all the emotion, because I knew I'm going to have another surgery. Another surgery meant having, cutting my life short for a while. It meant pain. It meant another journey. But I said, why not? I think I've reached that point. I've healed. Emotionally, I think I can talk about it. And, and that explains why I had the surgery later. I'm healing. And I said, as I have the iron removed on my knee, it's time to move on. And my moving on, it's time to encourage someone else. It's time, it's time, it's time to speak as a survivor. I think the more, why I write my story, when I see other people writing their stories, and I see people who, who we know, who we identify with writing their stories. And for me, I think I am not alone. So mine, I just want someone to say, to see, you're not alone. And I think it's time for the relevant, for, the, for, for, our, for our women to be protected, for the men, the relevant authorities. It's time, it's time that we do something. Because rape, rape it's not all about that moment. It's the trauma, it's the emotional bit. It's, it's the victim, the victim we get, we suffer the shame. And we suffer shame for we suffer shame for something that is beyond us. We suffer shame for something that someone else did. I think as as I go on healing and speaking, that we'll have this conversation more and more about rape, about the effects of gender-based violence. And I hope that our society will be a much better place.